I have never once claimed to be a power leveler in Classic WoW, nor do I intend to become such a thing. I've always played the game very casually, enjoying the adventure and the RPG-ness and the discoveries along the way, but it does leave me behind my friends at times who get to play the game more than I do. So let's have a screeching contest. No. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Ah! And perhaps you too are in that position. You've been out-leveled and outpaced by so many in your guild, and it makes you feel like, like a complete frickin' noob. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or maybe you're not like me, and you just want to get to level 60 as fast as possible. And I know that there's a lot of you guys out there. And that, that is where leveling guides come in, like Joanna's. Back in the day, he set the record for the world's fastest WoW Classic leveling speed, and because of that, people thought he was some kind of guru or something, and they wanted to know his secrets. And that's exactly what the dude did. He made a guide and he made it available to the public. But the question is, just how much does this guide really increase your leveling speed? That's what I wanted to find out. And so, I bought the guide. I decided that what I was going to do for a video is conduct a little experiment. I would level two dwarf paladin characters to level 10 in Dunmoreau. And why dwarves in Dunmoreau? Honestly, because I wanted to do this test in a zone that I am 100% unfamiliar with in regards to questing. I've never really played a dwarf or a gnome back in the days of OG Classic, so this zone is mostly lost to me in my memories, and that's exactly what I want. I want a blank slate. So first, I would level a dwarf paladin to level 10 without the use of any sort of guide, no help, nothing, no add-ons. Then I would level up another dwarf paladin, but this time I would be following Joanna's guide to the letter. Once I hit level 10, I would do a forward slash played to see how fast I got to the level, and well, we'll see how this experiment goes. Gee, it sure is a beautiful day, isn't it, Mr. Flowers? I drink the blood of children. I know that maybe level 10 isn't really that much of a determiner when it comes to judging a level guide, but I admit, I don't want to have to level two dwarf paladins all the way to level 60, so <laughs> please forgive me. All that said, guys, let us jump into the challenge with our first dwarf, the non-leveling guide dwarf, that is, and let's see how we do. I admit that I felt pretty confident going into this challenge right from the beginning. Although I wasn't too familiar with the dwarf starting area, I knew enough about making mental maps in my head that I figured I wouldn't suffer all that much with getting lost in the starting area. As I made my way through Coldridge Valley for the dwarves and gnomes, I had a nice rhythm and pace going, I felt. I even got lucky a few times because when I was getting Felix's like gnomish tools or whatever, other players had already cleared out the trolls for me, so I was able to just run in there, grab the supplies, and get out without having to grind on too many mobs and that was pretty lucky so huh, good luck Joanna I got pretty lucky in the troll cave as well it was pretty cleared out when I went to go kill the big guy in the back so I don't know how the guide is gonna hold up to this shit but I guess we're gonna find out so cue the montage Well guys, I'm at the halfway mark right now and I hit level 5 within 27 Ooh. minutes of starting and uh uh, that's pretty good. At least I hope it's pretty good. We're, we're gonna find out. So after finishing my quests in that initial starting area, I headed north towards Karanos, and this is where the true challenge of this challenge was gonna come in. Coldridge Valley, or whatever, is pretty straightforward in its design and in its quests, but at Karanos, you are suddenly given a ton of quests that send you in every direction on the map. But first, I quickly discovered you have to find these quests, which is kind of a pain if you are not familiar with the zone like I am. I was walking in buildings left and right, trying to see if I could find a quest only to discover that the property was empty, uh, but that's okay. I got all the quests from the town. Maybe it, you know, I spent an extra minute or two looking around, but that's okay. I was still making good time. I immediately made a mental map of where I had to go. First thing I decided to do was I was going to run out and do the ammo quest that is near Coldridge Valley where you turn in the ammo to the Dwarven Mortar team, and then I would make my way north collecting boar ribs, bear furs, and yeti manes along the way. However, upon reaching the Dwarven Mortar team, I realized something. I did not have the ammo. Funny thing about Classic WoW, you should really read the quest text. 
You see, I thought the ammo had been given to me as a quest item, and I didn't realize that you had to go and collect it first near the Yeti cave. But that's okay. I just headed north, I continued on my quests, I got the ammo, braved this pain in the ass Yeti cave, and I did get lucky again because when I was leaving the Yeti cave after I got all the mains, a small group of people had cleared the entryway for me so I was able to escape without too much trouble. I might have messed up and had a setback in the fact I didn't know I had to go and get the ammo first before I could turn it in, but I feel that, you know, getting lucky with the Yeti cave and being able to walk out of it without too much trouble was kind of a blessing and it made up for lost time. I traveled across the snowy plains, I made my way across frozen lakes, and I admit I got lost quite a bit. A mysterious warlock suddenly showed up to wave at me briefly, hey there Mookluck, and I continued to level up level by level. Until something really weird happened. I had finished, quite literally, every quest I could find in the zone, but I was still only level 9. So for the last part of my getting to level 10 experience, I just went out and started killing tons of mobs around Dunmoreau, allowing me to hit level 10 as fast as possible. Now I don't know exactly what happened. Actually, I do. I just didn't know what to do or where to go, and I got lost a lot. But in the end, guys, I did my forward slash played after hitting level 10 on the Dwarf Paladin, and you know what? I managed the challenge in 2 hours and 53 minutes. I'm gonna be honest, guys. I know for a fact I did not do a good job when it comes to round 1. I retraced my steps a lot. I got lost quite a bit. I mean, I didn't know where to go for some quests, but it was really cool leveling up in Dunmoreau again, re-experiencing classic Dunmoreau in all of its glory. It was awesome. I, I liked it. But now it was time to do everything I just did. Again. But this time, I was going to do it with Joanna's leveling guide. I logged out, I made a new character on the same server, I hopped into the world on a new dwarf paladin, and well, here we go. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you something about using this guide. When I played that first character, I thought that I had the perfect rhythm for the quests in Cold Ridge Valley, planning out my routes and everything, and well, according to this guide, no. Not in the slightest. Joanna had me leaving some of the intro quests behind to do later, he had me dying on purpose to get back to the quest givers faster, and I couldn't really tell yet if I was leveling any faster than the first time. Because if you remember in round 1, I got lucky with the trolls that guard Felix's stuff, they were all cleared out when I was leveling up the first character, but this time I had to grind and kill them, so I don't know. And you know what guys, I hit level 5 and I did a forward slash played and you know what I got? 24 minutes. Whoa. So despite the fact I had spent a while killing those trolls, 3 minutes faster. That eh, wasn't much, but I'll take it. But let's be real, the true test of this challenge is going to be what happens once I get to Karanos, that level 5 to 10 experience, and I took my little dwarven feet northwards, I made my way across the snowy plains, and I arrived in that comfy inn yet again. But let me take a moment to talk about this guide and how I feel about it so far, having used it for, you know, about half an hour. The guide, to its credit, is incredible in how it's laid out. It's really simple. You get this big list of all the quests that you have to do, where do you get them at, where do you go for them, and Joanna provides maps and detailed information for all the quests right there. It's all built into the website. As you do things, you just start checking them off the list, they get grayed out, and the website is made very, very well. All the maps and information were a great help to me as well because I did really struggle with finding quests in round one, but this just made it so much easier. And lo and behold, I discovered I actually missed a quest in Karanos the first time. And that's a bit embarrassing for me to admit, but it's true. But you want to know what's even more embarrassing? This. I died on the second round while using the guide. Dude, holy crap. These freaking damn trolls, Blizzard, give me a break. These trolls quite literally are stepping all over my tiny dwarven bullets, if you know my meaning. I'm trying to speed level here, but I'm getting my ass kicked. I admit, I'm a little bit worried about my final time, just being real. I mean, I keep almost dying, and I didn't get close to dying once in round one, so... Oh, we're gonna see what happens, but holy fuck, what did I expect? I mean, it is classic WoW. Anyway, 
The guide also introduced me to quests I wasn't even aware of, which was this elite Yeti quest that was hidden up in the mountains of Dunmoreau, but I wasn't able to do it despite the fact I ran past the cave twice. The first time I tried, the Yeti had patrolled, you know, he was outside of the cave, he was walking around, you know, he was taking a big fat Yeti dump behind a tree, and I snuck into the cave, and I was trying to get this like little, this little box or whatever, but suddenly the Yeti's all pissed off and he's charging in the cave going, <laughs> I'm having a bubble, I'm having to run away, and I almost die again. And oh my god, dude, this game ain't no joke. But my adventures continued nonetheless. I did my absolute best to follow the guide to the letter. I got frustrated nearly dying so much in this round. My hands were sweaty, my knees were weak, my arms were heavy, there was vomit on my sweater already, but I managed to hit level 10 at long last. And this time, funnily enough, I hit level 10 with quests to spare in the zone. So that was awesome to see. I definitely felt like I had leveled faster than my previous round, but how much faster? I wasn't really sure because I was not paying any attention to the clock throughout this entire challenge. But I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are like, Nixium, just tell us the forward slash played. What was the result? How much faster did you get to level 10? 10 minutes faster? 15 minutes faster? Try almost an hour. Yeah. Using Joanna's guide, I had cut out a third of my leveling time compared to the first round, and to be honest, I was shocked by that revelation. I died during round two. I spent so much time eating due to near deaths, and yet somehow I managed to be this fast? You chilly with my anime hair and ADD, bro? Despite being surprised, I'm not. And you know why that is? because I've used Joanna's leveling guide plenty of times in the past. Back when I was a kid, all those years ago, I used his guide, so I am well aware of how much faster you level by following Joanna's techniques. And back when Nostalrius was a thing, I used Joanna's leveling guide on there with a second character. This video I thought wouldn't just be a cool experiment for me to do and record and edit and upload to show to you guys, but it's also credit where credit is due. Joanna and his guide has helped a lot of people, including me, so let's give him a shout out, shall we? I mean, why not? Because let's be real here. A lot of us are not the fastest levelers in the world, and many of us might have gotten left behind because of real life obligations or whatever, so now our friends and our guildmates are much higher level than us. And Joanna's guide can help with catching back up with everybody else. So if you want to check out the guide in further detail, just click that first link down in the description below. And consider supporting Joanna by purchasing the guide. And if you're somebody, and I know you guys are out there, you might not believe me, you think this is just a big fake experiment or whatever. And if you do, and if you fall in that category, well guess what? You can try out this experiment for free. And you can do that because on his website, the first 12 levels of the guide are completely free. So see if it works for you, just like I did, try it out. Either way guys, Thank you for watching the video. Good luck to all of you with your classic WoW adventures. And Joanna, let me say this. Thank you for the holy balls number of hours you have saved me and a lot of people with your guide. Damn. I might, I might have went a little overboard there. <laughs> <laughs>